videos that from, from the old clamors to the boat builders to okay. the, uh, there are really clamors and um, uh, scallop guys. I mean, they're actually growing the clams now. Yeah. It's just we can't keep anything really going out there the way the waters are. Um, and mine was the funniest one, and a lot of it was filmed in the junkyard and then out in the bays. Nice. Um, you know, Jim, but I do tend to get involved in these things big time. Hold that thought. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want to talk about the things that you've done in the media. There's a lot of it that you've done. So stay tuned to Motormouth Radio, Ray Guarino, Joe D., Jimmy from the Junkyard. We will be back in a minute. Uh, hang on and enjoy the, uh, the Mother's Day music. Hey, I just got a ticket from one of those red light cameras. Good news. My show, Law You Should Know, can help you fight that. My brother just got arrested for shoplifting. My show has info about that, too. My mom told me she's worried about whether she needs a will. Law You Should Know can help her with that. My cousin was hurt in a car accident. Can he sue? Law You Should Know can help with that, too. My uncle has some legal questions, but he doesn't think he can afford a lawyer. Tell him to be sure to listen to Law You Should Know every Wednesday at 3 p.m. or Sunday at 7 a.m. for lots of free info about the law right here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Smile! Are you telling the microphone to smile so you could take a picture of it? Yeah. So, which side do you think is its good side? It's just a microphone. I know, it's a microphone. Perfect. I think I'll put the Lark filter on it. Why did you take a picture of the microphone, and who cares what filter you're going to use? You'd care if you followed 903WHPC on Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Wait, I want to go viral. Take a picture of me. Um... Get my good side and use that Lark filter. Follow 903WHPC on Instagram and join the conversation from the voice of Nassau Community College. I said, get my good side. Delete that. Oh. That's 903WHPC on Instagram from 90.3WHPC. Every sound, every note, including the bass, on this track is played by a monkey. American Hit Radio, Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3WHPC. And we are back, WHBC, Ray Guarino, Motormouth Radio, Joe D. with Jimmy Ruacco from Freeport Auto Wrecking, Operation Splash, and the LWTB program, which had me scared for a minute when I first read that. I'm like, L, who, G, B, T, what the hell's he into yeah. now? But no, it's not that. It's... I get that wrong every time I go and type it in for something. <laughs> <laughs> Auto correct. Living, living with the bay. But that, when, living with when, the bay. When you're one finger typing, that's too, yeah. way too long. So and this is one particular case where I like the shortcut. So give us a call, 516-572-7440. Check us out on MotormouthRadio.com. We're on iHeartRadio and Performance Motorsports Network. And all those ways you can get us, of course, on the live stream. And something I want to touch on, Jim, we'll, we'll get away from the nautical stuff for a second. You're also the creator and star of that, that hit Discovery Science show, Junkies. Oh, yeah, that's right. As well that's as a while ago. Forged in Fire just did an episode of their show at, your, at was, your place. It was the first one that they did out of a studio. I don't know how they could do it in a studio. You got four hand-cranked coal forges going. The smoke in, even in the yard was unbearable. Wow. So I don't know. Wherever, they, wherever it is, they must have a lot of fans. Oh, but yeah. that was interesting. They repurposed. Uh, they gave every, every, everyone a choice to what they wanted to build their blade out of. And um, uh, leaf spring. Um, some, right. The leaf spring was pretty else. cool. The leaf spring. Um, a torsion bar. The guy that picked the torsion bar. Right, oh, right. my God. What? As soon as I saw that, I go, he's got to be nuts. <laughs> he's got to hammer that. He's the biggest guy there with the biggest muscles. He's going to hammer that thing down into a blade. And the woman... That gives him a hobby. The woman yeah. that the woman that p- picked the leaf spring spent forty five minutes on a die grinder on a bench, cutting the leaf spring, and I'm going, she's gonna she's gonna be the one that's gonna blow them all away. Mm. Yeah, she had her whole shape ready. <coughs> yeah, if she didn't, but she got a migraine from the smoke. Yeah, yeah, and then she kind of lost it. But the other guy was hammering, and oh, he was a yeah. big bull. He was hammering for four hours to get that knife out. He you couldn't know, get it done. I'm not a I'm not a total 
I'm not totally committed to the show, but I have watched episodes of it. That's what I started. And you watch these guys, they'll go back to their home forge. And some of them are nothing more than a little garage, a one-car garage with a dirt floor. Yep. And they're out there with a coal forge and, and banging on stuff in, in South Carolina. Oh, this was high-tech for them compared yeah. to the way some of them are working back home. Yeah. yeah. So how's the TV world been to you? Because you've been, you know, the, the Junkie Show went for a season. That was great. Of course Six episodes this. we got. Yeah, which is typically six to eight is, is usually the first fact, season. that was the last time I was on air with you because because um, you That's called right, yeah. in and mm-hmm. got Marie on the phone, right? and she was in the background, and that was the, and you, then you came down later in the day. That was the second right. Buffalo Avenue event that we had out in the street. That's correct. Yes, right. The Buffalo Avenue, because that's, that's legendary. People ask oh, yes. all the time, and I want to get into this, too, because now your new venue is event planning, which I think is fantastic. People, listeners of this show will still ask us on occasion, hey, when are you going to have another one of those parties at the junkyard? Because we had our, you graciously let us host our 10th year anniversary party. That at was the amazing. Junkyard. And it was fantastic. Yeah. We brought in a live band, and of course, we and had that the was, barbecues. That was going. the year that the Auto Museum was getting together and going to open up, too. That's right. Which I haven't gone to in. Yes. Right. Since 2011. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely want to hook up with them because we want to do some car enthusiast. Uh, uh, events over there. That place just keeps getting better and better. We were there uh, a few with weeks the, ago. Yeah, right. Easter. Easter. Easter time, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you had just done, at that time, you had just done the Freeport Historical Society had an anniversary. I forget, was it 50 years, 100 50 years? 50 or right? 75 years. Something like that. It's yeah. hard to tell. Half, half the people that came in there were 90 years old, so it could have been 75 years. <laughs> right, right. We couldn't get them so. out. We were, we, we were white linens on the tables and silverware and a whole 10 yards. They were there for four hours. We had everybody announces. Soon as the announcement stopped, soon as the announcement stopped, it was, um, uh, everybody would just get up and walk around and take pictures. Get up yeah. and walk around and take pictures. Well, and we, well that's we, quite the venue. For the people who haven't been there, Jimmy's Place is a working recycling yard, a junkyard. You can go in and buy parts for your car. I've done it. I do it all the time. But yet, Jimmy's a collector. Yep. And I'm going to let you imagine what that term means, because you got to see it to believe it. And that's what people are taking the pictures of. Are we having a stroke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're getting flashed. Yeah, let's, we, got, we got a bite somewhere. Let's, let's go to the phones and say, hi, you're on the Motor Mouths, Ray, Joe, and Jimmy. Hey, Ray, Joe, and Jimmy. Bob here. How are you guys? Hey, Bob. What's up, Bob? Oh, yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Thank Happy. you. Same to you, Bob. I have a question. Uh, first of all, Jimmy, thanks for your decades of service. Thank you. You know, you walk the walk. And uh, not many people can uh, say they do that. You know what I mean? Yep. It's, you, you have to love what you're doing when it comes to the environment. You really do. But it's, it's, it's an easy thing to get wrapped up in, real easy. Well, I, I'm sure it's uh, all-consuming, right? <laughs> Yeah, it is all-consuming, and even my accountant says to me, Jimmy, you've got to spend a little more time with your yard if you want to keep it alive. You can't be going out on these jaunts all over the place saving the world. Got to sell some more junk. So yeah. I had a question, and perhaps you could bring us up to speed on the breach out on the Barrier Beach out in the Great South Bay. Yeah, the new inlet, which used to be called the old inlet. The yeah, only one we um, left I'm open. I'm going to listen to you on the air. Uh, maybe you could just uh, bring us up to speed on that, because it, it appears to be uh, quite beneficial, and, and I understand there's another argument. Keep up the good work and have a great weekend. Sure. I'll, Thanks, Bob. I'll give you a little rundown on that if you listen right. to this one here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the, uh, the, old, the old inlet was filled in many, many years ago because those barrier islands are very dynamic. Um, splash, all of us have had Splash for the last 12 to 15 years have been advocates of trying to get not necessarily a breach, but to be able to do some tidal flushing when our bays were the healthiest, we had five more inlets than we have now. Okay. Uh, once they started to get populated, Robert Moses came in, put the parkway connections and stuff like that. It was like, well, whenever we lose sand, we got to bring it back. Then people started moving out in the Hamptons and building castles out there. And then we had a responsibility to them. Um, but the... But the Barrier Islands are dynamic. After Sandy, we had two or three breaches out in that Mariches area. And the only reason why the breach on the, uh, which they call the new inlet, which, by the way, broke open within 40 feet of the one from 100 years ago. Just right. tells you a little something about Mother Nature being persistent. Yeah, kind of like, uh, I really wanted this to be there, guys. So here's mm-hmm. the argument. The argument is, if you create any kind of tidal flushing or you open anything up, we have no idea whether it's going to end up being a mile wide or it's going to close itself back up. And then we had to listen to the stories about, well, it's going to bring in invasive species. We don't even have the species that we had in the You mean like the guys the from Queens? <laughs> we don't have our clams. We don't have a, we, we don't have a lot of things we don't have. Uh, we used yeah, to have, yeah. 
And uh, one of the things that we don't have is uh, dissolved oxygen. And that, and mm. you got to keep in mind that the Great South Bay, which is right opposite Fire Island, is average two feet deep. So without tidal flushing. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing was, you know, that it's going to change the water temperature. Well, obviously, with six inlets years ago when we were our healthiest, water temperature probably was ocean temperature. Right. And so protecting ourselves from a temperature rise is like, what data are you drawing that off of the last 50 years, the last 100 years, or the last 1,000 years? We don't know. Mm. Bottom line, Sandy broke that open. It's part of the national seashore. So we all know that national decisions are much slower. In this case, it's beneficial to us than county and state mm -hmm. decisions. So nobody could make up their mind. Nobody could touch it. It was up to national parks. National parks decided they were going to leave it open, and we were going to watch it, and if it got out of control, then they were going to do something about it. Um, it's been since 2011 now, 2012, right? 2012, I right. think, November yeah. 2012. Um, it's grown and closed, and we're, we're seeing a lot of sandbars. I saw pictures, aerial pictures of that just before a couple of days before the storm, and the ocean water was blue, and the bay water was brownish green. Mm. The day after that breach, all the water was blue. Wow, what a surprise. Really? Now, <laughs> um, then they said, okay, now we're going to have surges. We're going to have flooding. Well, water seeks its own level. That was mm -hmm. been one of the biggest arguments, and, and that's kind of a bit of a fallacy. So um, with that came the oxygen. Diffused mm. oxygen levels went up. Temperature dropped. Things balanced. Right. Things started to grow. Um, we might end up with, from the last photos I saw, the aerial photos I saw, the way the sand is coming in, which is replenishing the bays, um, we may end up with a little more complicated wetland in there like we have in the western bays, which is really critical. And nice. that's where all of this funding money is coming for now because after all of these years, the so-called environmentalists that are our gatekeepers are finally realizing that the wetlands are tidal and hurricane buffers, very much like a mangrove. I mean, there's nothing better than a mangrove. They're like hurricane proof. It's like mm -hmm. living behind a barrier. Mm. Um, the wetlands are collapsing. Uh, they look beautiful when you go out there, and, and they were blaming boat wakes, but it's not boat wakes. It's the amount of nitrogen in the water, and a lot of it in the western base comes from the treated discharge, which has high levels of nitrogen. Right, so right. Okay. it's like fertilizer. So what happens is and we had to literally prove it, was that the reason why the marshlands were collapsing was because these plants are getting artificially fed right. with nitrogen. So they're not growing roots. They're getting pumped up. And without roots, there's nothing to hold them together. Mm. So they didn't do a whole lot for us in Sandy. We actually lost a lot. And then on top of that, they normally grow. There's always a certain amount of silt in the water, and gradually right. wetlands grow. If the wetlands don't get healthy and they don't grow, they're going to end up subsiding and sinking and collapsing, and we're going to have no protection. It's going to be like you're going to live on the South Shore of Long Island. It's going to be like living on the beach. J uh, Joe, do you feel like you're back in botany and chemistry class with Jim? Wow, oh, yeah, except that this time I'm sober, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's scary that I'm <laughs> talking to people on a microphone here, and I'm actually, yeah. actually at a, at a, a univer uh, underneath the university. It's, it's typical that the junk man would get to, invited to a college and to be put in the basement. Well, well I that's feel they more stick comfortable us. Don't here. feel so bad. I, I always looked at it like it's more, this is, this was the, this was a, mili uh, you know, a military base, an Air Force Military base. base first. And this was the hospital, this building. This is Building H was the hospital. Really? And what's in the basement of the hospital all the time? Yeah, so. the, the dead wood. <laughs> so that's where they put us. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, no, no, I feel, well, don't get me wrong. I feel comfortable, and I do see a little light out of the ceiling yeah. windows over here. You can here. see the, the, the Yeah, the yeah so it's kind rock of rock ironic thing. that the junk man is talking about all these things, which has been a personal effort of just a lot of research and just sticking my nose in everything. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that because... It's time for another break again. Fifteen minutes is it? Wow! I I, yeah, I just I'm watching the clock. They flying. We got a new one down here too. When we come back, I want to get into because people have asked me, "Hey, how does this guy who knows junk know all this stuff about effluent and, and about and photosynthesis and, and plants?" Yeah, there's a lot of cool words flying around here. So we're going to touch base on your 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 past a little bit, Jim. When we get back. Uh, Motormouth Radio, Ray Guarino, Joe D with Jimmy from Freeport Auto and Flash, uh, Splash. Now Flash, that was his other. We're going to flash back. That, that was his other. <laughs> that was from uh, way back when. That's the guy with right. the red suit. Exactly. And I'm going to make that caller a little happy because I just want to re embellish that question he had a little more. Time. All right, Motormouth Sounds Radio. Sounds good. Keep it where you got it.